Welcome to the Tribute Lounge. I'm Mark Fawcett. And I'm Shane Johnson. And on today's show, the seven things you need to wear to go snowboarding. All right, so to kick off today, we definitely want to welcome another new sponsor to the show, Cole Headwear, Johan, George, and crew. Thank you guys so much. These guys are going to help us keep the lights on down here, and it's a huge freaking help to keep bringing you guys the show. Now, I've been wearing Cole. You've seen this hat on my head a lot. So we're not, this isn't a paid promotion. We always wore the shit anyway. 100%. But, and that's why this partnership is so cool. So, yeah, we just wanted to welcome those guys. You'll see a couple rad little uh, ads coming up and things like that. But uh, once again, just thanks, Cole Headwear. We really appreciate it. So today's premise, the seven things we need to be wearing, the seven categories, the seven items, groups, whatever you want to call it, that you need to go snowboarding, resort, touring, doesn't matter. This is going to cover it all. Great. And first off, let's start from... The bottom, we'll start from the base outward. The base outward. Base layer. Uh, base layers are super key. They are, there's tech to them. Yes. And there's a couple different options, particularly with materials and textile. All right, so starting with high end first. I was lucky enough this year, the great dudes at Skyline sent a few things for us to try, and I received a merino wool first layer. So why do I always wear merino wool? Because I'm always cold. <laughs> That's why I wear merino two, two, wool. Two main things that people wear merino for is if you get them a little bit wet, it still insulate quite Holds well the heat. when they're wet. Exactly. And the other one is you hang them up to dry and the smell goes away if there's even any at all. They're a lot, they're very uh, antimicrobial naturally. by nature, naturally. Yes. Yeah, naturally antimicrobial. And really, this will be the premise of today. We do have a lot of wool, merino wool, a lot of wool pieces, because if they do get wet, we're out in snow, we're gonna get wet. If they get wet, they hold heat. So this is a premise around all of it. The Skyline stuff's been great. It was really, really warm the day, the Salmo day we were out. That's what I was wearing was this stuff. Fits fantastic, looks great. Canadian company, these guys are out of Calgary. The other piece I wear when I'm, you know, when I know that it's going to be really, really cold, the Ninja Suit Pro. This thing is, it's nuts. It's so rad. So <laughs> it's, you've, you've got- It's a furnace. Oh, it really is. So there's a small percentage of wool in this, but the grid fleece that I love, which also holds heat, it's grid against your body and there's all these little spaces. Well, that's going to hold heat inside of each space retaining more heat on your body. Mostly fleece on this one, and uh, thick, really warm, really comfortable. I wear this guy right to my skin, and no problem at all, and then you look like a baller when you're walking around the lodge, too. <laughs> Fozzie runs hotter than I do. I so. do, so I wear, I also love ninja suits. Um, again, this is an Air Blaster product, and um, I mean, to be perfectly honest, if you ride 100 days a year, I got a bunch of different underlayers yes, and stuff. I mean, like, but um, I don't mind polyester at all, especially if I'm washing them more often. And they're getting better with antimicrobial um, coatings or what have you with polyester. Plus, there's that factor of a lot of them are made out of like recycled bottles. Pop bottles, yeah. And, yeah. and such. The one other good thing is, especially if you're doing something um, like a, a glacier trip or something even though it doesn't uh, insulate as well when it's wet, they dry a lot faster. Really quick, so polyester breathe really well as well. Breathes well and yep. dries quick. So there's the pros and cons. Of, I, I literally have a drawer full of both. Um, but yeah, so I wear, I wear a pretty thin ninja suit, polyester usually, um, and that's my daily base layer. Yeah, mostly like if you're out touring, that's gonna be a common piece because you're working hard, you're sweating hard, this, you're not gonna be touring in one of these. This lends itself a bit more to resort. You know, the winds are blowing, it's like minus 30 like we had a few weeks ago here. That's when this one's coming out or I'm considering the Marina yeah. wool. Spring vibes, you're not wearing this no. in, in April. No, 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 no. 
in, in the plus. Exactly. Yeah. So that's our first layer. Now, on to layer two, which is socks. So with the socks, we brought down three brands that we sell the most in the store. Cole has a wool blend. Stance has a performance wool blend that has some uh, unique stretch to it. And then the AKs, we sell a lot of these. We both tend to wear the AK quite often too. And uh, Mark will point out some good features. Socks aren't just socks. This is important. It, they're absolutely a performance piece. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I'm not too into cotton socks, not because of the material, it's just they're really generic in pattern. And the technical aspect of a really good snowboard sock is they'll actually be asymmetric. And mm -hmm. uh, in the same way uh, a physiotherapist can like tape your ankle in certain ways, the socks are designed to stretch and hold your arch in a particular fashion. That's why you'll see either a right or left Obviously, follow the instructions. And so, like on this AK, so actually, all three of these pair of socks, I believe, have uh, what I would call asymmetric. Uh, they're asymmetric, and they have tension upward on from the inside of your arch, uh, and you can see that in the paneling. So that's the inside, the and the outside of the foot doesn't have it at all. So that's a key feature. I I don't own a pair of socks. I don't go snowboarding in socks that don't have that. Exactly. exactly. You got to pay a little more for them. And you're gonna have multiple pair. But you're I gonna mean, have multiple pairs of socks. My feet feel so much. Again, if you're a hardcore rider and you're riding 100 plus days a year, or even 40, 50 days a year, yeah. uh, that means there's consecutive days. I hate wearing old. I hate wearing dirty socks. They're even a little crispy. No, that's multiple I'm socks. Like, well, multiple I, socks. I, like, Ask for socks for Christmas, the, the whatever it is. The compartment in my travel bag, and I yes. travel a lot, the, the, the biggest compartment and the most volume of goods I have is socks. Yeah. This is your interaction with your board, your bindings, your boots. So this has to be a dialed piece of gear. Spend the money here. It's important. A hundred percent. Yeah. All, All right. right. So now we're on to the mid layer, and this is where we differ a little bit. Um, because my base layer is really, really warm, this is where I actually go to a polyfill. This is the Patagonia Nano Puff. It has 60 grams of Primaloft in it. This thing is so packable. And what I like about it, again, it dries quick. That's my one thing. Does it come with a DWR too? So now I have another layer of waterproofing in my kit. And it, literally, I'll just put it right over this. Sometimes I have another fleece that I'll put this guy fleece, then move to the nano. But most of the time, that's my kit there, and I'm just pairing that, and then jacket over top. Really, Fozzie, I, I, yeah, down. I do something a little different. Um, I go with a waffle AK uh, mid layer piece, a hooded one. Waffle grid, so waffle the same grid, grid like exactly yeah, yeah. same grid. Uh, I mean, it's it's pretty prevalent in the industry now. We'll oh, say. Yeah. But yeah, I love this thing over top um, uh, of my ninja suit. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about outerwear here in a minute, but with the pants get up I wear, that it gives me some more insulation in the chest area and such. This works great, and then my jacket over top. Uh, we'll get into, we'll get in in a minute to why, why I like hood. the hoodie yes. version. Yes, um, of course. And then if it is cold, like real cold, and we just experienced some of that, then I do have a super lightweight, this one's at least a year old, it's a uh, AK Baker, so it's an ultra light. It is down, um, super packable, really warm for how actually light it is. Yeah, and both of these works, work. Works, both of these work with nylon. And they'll pack tiny. One tiny. thing that's nice with the nylon is really good shear movement inside your, jackets, your outermost yeah, yeah. layer. So having that shear in between doesn't mean you, you don't bind up. Um, Work, works really well, and it's not, it's not bulky. And again, layering, why we layer is we're creating more layers of heat. So each time in between, you've now got another layer of heat that the two areas they, are gonna bond. Trap. And this is why we layer. We're not throwing on a <clears throat> 600 gram down jacket to go snowboarding. Which because, I have one of those too, but I don't well, wear it. I don't use that's it That's for standing often. around, yeah, not necessarily. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. mobility, we're, we're all of that's kind of playing into this decision making. And then of course, just the, the flexibility of like, first thing in the morning, it's cold, I, I do four runs. Exactly. Then I'm like, okay, I'm starting to get a little too warm. Boom. This gets peeled off super quick and you're, you know, you're back in your same kit. And both of them will pack to about that size, back in your backpack or in the lodge and away you go. Let's, let's talk outerwear. 
All right, so this is our favorite category. This is outerwear. This is this is your vibe. This is how you look on the hill. Yeah. But it's also technical and it's also really, really important. So Mark and I have a history. We were guides at Bald Face. We've done a lot of uh, long days in the field. So we learned about three-layer anything. Three-layer Gore-Tex, Entron, Event, whatever, whatever you want to buy. Gore-Tex is phasing into new categories. We're going to see that coming up soon. But um, three layers where we're going to start. That's what primarily both of us wear. For sure. And, yeah. you know, it's just that, it's that durability. Um, you know, three-layer to two-L, well, there's not a really big difference in the waterproof and breathability. True. Um, but certainly the, like the durability, like for those of you that are out all the time, uh, the three layers are are insane. So the face fabric's always gonna have a DWR. There's a coating here. That's what's holding those water molecules up. And then these fabrics, you'll, you'll spot a three layer pretty easy because it's not gonna have any hanging mesh. It's usually pretty technical and you're gonna see your welded seams. That's something to be always looking for. Seams should be welded throughout a 3L jacket because we're talking premium price right now. So my bibs from Air Blaster, the B series, which I wear the 3L, and uh, you can see them right here. The other thing with that is you're gonna have a powder skirt with any of these. And we're lucky, we're in the Kootenays, powder skirt's kind of important. Not all jackets will have it. If you're resort riding, it's not maybe as necessary, but that's something else you're gonna find. And, and a lot of them zip out. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. don't know if that one does, but I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll find them that do. And then again, here's that difference. So this is a 2L piece. This yep. is an anorak jacket, and I'll tell you why I like that in a second. Um, and, and it does have that hanging fabric and hanging the mesh. mesh. Yep. Um, and it like, the breathability to like get it out and away from you and vent it out is really good with that. Uh, shears well, maybe a little bit better than a three, uh, 3L. Um, There'll be a breathability difference. This will be a percentage better because there's less material to move yep. through. Yep. Water molecules that are hot are going to move through this easier because they're smaller. Yep. Cold molecules will hold from the outside because they're cold, they're bigger. That's the simple science of how exactly. any of these things work. Exactly. Um, and then for me, uh, Anorak. So again, it's, this is a pull over uh, with a half zip. And what I really like about Anoraks is I don't get zipper bunch here. And mainly for resort riding. So day-to-day -day resort riding backcountry. Um, I have a different jacket, which I'll show you for when I ride backcountry. But day-to-day uh, -day at the resort, I love, I, just, I like the look of it. Love the feel of not having that zipper. Uh, less kind of in my wind way. coming through as uh, yeah, well, it's right? Really like good. Less wind I got permeation. A giant kangaroo pocket. Well, it's sideways, <laughs> but a really big pocket in there too for whatever. Um, so yeah, that's that's my piece. And then of course too, um, I'm bibs all day long. As bibs, am I. Bibs, yep. bibs, full bib pants. Uh, these AK ones have been like kind of an industry standard for a long time. Gore-Tex, you can get them in 3L and 2L versions. Yeah. Uh, this happens to be the 2L version and love it. Then this is another reason why I don't have to go so crazy with my mid layers because I have, have, I have Gore fabric. up to yeah. here and yeah. up my back. Um, of course, wind, snow, everything gets blocked from getting into that seam between uh, your upper and your lower exactly. outerwear. Exactly. So, yeah. Some people don't like them. They don't like the straps or something. Like I have a hard time riding without the feeling of straps over my shoulders now. Yeah, some of the freestyle guys on our team, I understand why they don't like to have the bib. There's a, maybe a percentage of mobility that seems a little odd, but for the most part, it, it's 50-50 upstairs with what people are buying. I just like this because there's no snow going down my ass. Yeah. Like that's, at the end of the day, that's why I like a bib. Yeah. And I can throw my nano puff over this if I'm touring, and this, the outerwear is you know, sitting in my backpack on the way up. Um, the spring, other, spring vibes, I just wear a, I wear a flannel wear, under the bib yeah. and rock, or just my hoodie. And again, no snow going down the back. The other thing to think about too is we are wearing, a lot of the time, try to wear one piece like the ninja suits. That's another layer, just not letting snow get down exactly. the crack of your back there. So another thing I like to wear, particularly if I'm going into the back country or think I might be, is this Skyline Fuse, and it's a 3L uh, Pro Shell. 
So again, similar to what Shane was describing, like welded seams, super hardy material, crazy uh, water repellent. I mean, just You shaking. were wearing this one at the demos. I was wearing this at the demos, and yeah. I mean, it was like rain, freezing rain mix, and I mean, like it absorbed nothing. I was bone dry on the inside. Um, and just a lot of the classic things, some really big pockets for different things when it's raining. Um, I'm putting my goggles in there, or uh, they have a goggle slash skin pocket in here. I mean, it's basically a goggle pocket, but I have, and I've seen people, you throw your skins in there too. Anything you need to warm up. Crispy days yeah, yeah. and, and you know, your skins are freezing up. Like it's a great spot to have them for that run totally, down. Totally. Um, so I, I will switch from Anorak to a full zip for those days. You need to be able to take it on and off, change layers. Yeah, the anoraks are a little more cumbersome when it comes to that, but if it's on for the day... If it's on for the day, yeah, they're great. For sure. But, it, you know, when you're doing that backcountry shuffle of layers, etc., then the full zip's the way to go, and this jacket works great. Yeah. And I do a lot of resort riding, too, probably a little less touring, especially this year, a little less touring. And uh, that's... I'll usually wear something... I like traditional-looking snowboard jackets. You know, the era we started in, a lot of stuff was really basic looking like this. I love this color they came out with this here. This is the easy style jacket from Air Blaster. It's 15K, it's a two layer. And with this, I just get all the basics, but I get insulation. I was gonna say. And this yeah. is the one thing we haven't really talked about. This has 40 grams of poly insulation in it, which is great because I'm now not wearing the Patagonia one. I'm just wearing my first layer. I'm throwing this guy on and I'm good for the most part. Good for the day. Super dialed, very basic, and just, it's when styling kind of plays into it a little more for me, Rip and Salmo, whatever, but uh, fantastic jacket as well. And just, you don't have to wear a three layer on a mellow day on the T-bar. You just don't. Exactly. So lots of options. You know, these run in around the 270 range, and we've talked about jackets in upwards of $1,000. So that's gonna play into your decision making, plus style, color, and you know, how you wanna look. All right, so now on to a small category. Yeah, but it's a super very important. important category. I mean, maybe one of the most important. How do you keep your head warm? Exactly, clavas. So with clavas, I've always been pretty brand loyal to the Alpine clava with coal. This thing, it's our, the way it articulates around my face and the way I can get it up around here is just, this thing's fantastic and the biggest thing we're gonna talk about, just like your hoodie, what are we doing? We're protecting our neck from the elements. The worst thing is getting snow down there. Well, along or with your cold butt. wind yeah. or anything like exposed yeah. protect neck. Protect from the elements, your, your butt crack and your neck. Those are the ones that are always exposed. So this is how we remedy that. I'm a big fan of this one. Yeah, absolutely. And what I do as my sneaky little trick, uh, I wear bib pants for my head, which is basically, totally. That insulated hoodie, I put the hood up, helmet over top of that, and I can like adjust how far that hood kind of comes out in a similar way. Yeah, and I never get that here. like cold air down through. I've had, we had our vicious cold snap and I was out in minus 40, working at Sunshine, putting up fencing for an event, and I wore a cold balaclava and my, uh, and my underlayer hoodie under my helmet. Yeah, This has the grid fleece I'm always talking about as well. So a lot of the products I'm looking for will have that. Again, it just holds heat a percentage better. It really does. So moving on from that, I think it's, you know, the next most important thing we're talking about is just choosing between a mitt, a glove, or a trigger mitt. There's really three options. Mobility plays into this a lot. Are you doing things? Are you messing with your bindings? Are you, you know, do you need all appendages working? Absolutely. Do you I mean, get super cold? Cold mitts, if you want to be running uh, any sort of little heated pocket oh, pockets, pads. Those guys into such, mitts. Mitts are like, great for that. I mean, yeah, if you have like a tricky binding situation or you're uh, actively working, wanting to use like like a, a guidebook or anything like that, obviously then you're into the So we brought the, world. the tech the tech mitt down, or sorry, the tech glove down. Um, it, we have a whole run of AK upstairs from the guide to the oven mitt, which is a down mitt. Uh, Black Diamond, we do the Dirt Bag series. We have the Sparks. We have, what's that model there? 
That is the session, session. mitt. So you're gonna find leathers, you're gonna find synthetics, um, and then all sorts of insulation with those. It's a pretty personal thing, but again, you, you just wanna make sure the outer has a really good durability to it. You're gonna know that by feeling them. And then in your gear bag, you're gonna have a couple pairs. Of course, yeah. Depending where you live and what kind of conditions you're out in. I mean, if you're in Colorado and it's just dry bluebird every day, you can get away with maybe two pairs of gloves. I mean, like I have a bag full of gloves for the Pacific yeah. Northwest. Yeah. And then on to probably the most important of this entire thing is gonna be our goggles. That category, that's the window to all the riding you're doing. This is, I always say, the two most important things you buy are your boots and your goggles because you know, that's what's integrating you. Your boots are manipulating everything, making it move, and this is how you see. Yeah. If those two aren't working, it's a bad day, straight up. It's always gonna be a bad day. So, goggles, I love the Target line series from Oakley, that's what I usually wear. Fozzie's been wearing add-ons quite a bit. They, yeah. And again, you know, when we talk helmets, and, and helmet is the sort of hard goods category that plays into this as well, or a beanie for that fact, but, you want to really watch how your goggle integrates with your helmet. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and I mean, they're starting to get a little bit better with, uh, it'll work with different brands, but like ideally, like the Oakleys work really well with the with Oakley, the Oakley helmet. helmets. Totally. The Anons work super well, of course, with the Anon helmets, et cetera. Yeah. Um, it's not a hard rule. No, nope. these you, will work in you, a wave cell. I've seen it. But when you yep. can, you might as well if, you, if you're going to go buy both, I would recommend trying to uh, stick with that one brand from that perspective. And the, th the thing with, with all your goggles, the foams are always going to be different. There's different densities. There's different bridges on everyone's nose. Try on a bunch at a local shop. Don't buy this online. Sorry, web stores, but I'm going to push oh, that. 100%. You I mean, it's, go into it's a as, shop. It's yeah. as specific as like a pair of boots. As your boots. And the boots 100%. is the exact same thing. And get. I'll say the same thing here, too. Like I'll say Mod 1 All Day is probably one of the nicest helmets I've seen. I love the ventilation here. But still, try it on in store because somebody has an oval-shaped head. Somebody has a round head. So try your helmets on. You gotta go to a store to try helmets. For on. sure. And then with Anon, I'm loving Wave Cell. Like it's the most safety tech, totally uh, leading the industry in that like serious concussion, protective tech, um, like brilliant stuff, lightweight as can be, and like ultra safe. Yeah, the way it's like that corrugated cardboard on a side impact, it just takes up so much more of that throughout the helmet. Compresses and shears both. For sure. And then the other big thing with helmets, you know, looking at different grades, having a boa in the back, really nice. Um, I'd say the, the great percentage of helmets have it now. If you have a real price point helmet, it might not. And if you're lucky enough that your head fits it perfectly, yeah, good for you. Which was rare. Which, was which rare. is rare. Yeah. And then if you're switching between Bellaclava and not, et cetera, having that adjustability that is really nice. Yeah, so those, that's the seven items you really have to focus on. We tried to make this one short, but if you're just getting into snowboarding or you're just looking to fill in those categories, hopefully that was helpful. That was one of our Patreon questions, so I wanted to be sure that we address that. And uh, again, we're, we're welcoming Cole to the show. Again, thank you guys. This is super rad. And there's... Uh, one thing we'd like to discuss too, we go through the analytics every once in a while and subscribe. I, hate to, I hate to be that guy, but yeah, I looked and 80% of the people watching don't subscribe. Subscribing really helps us keep this thing rolling. I know it's the YouTube thing and uh, you know, I hate to ask again, but please guys, if you're it's watching- It's just a click of the button. Yeah, like if you're watching- Like there's no big commitment, it would help us immensely. Just click the button. Exactly. <laughs> Thank so, you so like much. Like and subscribe. And again, we'll see you guys very soon. Hashtag go boarding. <laughs>